anxiety, attention, autism, and neurotoxicity from mycotoxins. I'm Dr. Trish Lee, certified neurofeedback and brain health coach. So in this video, I want to share with you the relationship between anxiety, attention challenges, neurodevelopmental disorders, including autistic spectrum disorders. There's two studies out of Tufts University Medical Center that show that these challenges are associated much more highly and distinctly with children who have mycotoxins from mold poisoning in their body. So this is important to me, not only as an educator and a professional, but unfortunately I and my family have suffered from mycotoxin poisoning in the past. So I know firsthand and secondhand how devastating and damaging mycotoxin poisoning can be. So of course, as it affected me and my family, I have dug in and I now know a lot of the inner workings of the neurotoxicity that can be caused by mold. So here's what I want to share with you is number one, if you're exposed to toxic mold, it's not something you can see most times. You can't smell it. You can't feel it. It is injuring and impairing your brain. It's unseen. You don't know. So uh, from a person who talks about explicit matter all the time, which is a niche that I focus on, my husband, the only thing that bothers him more is when I talk about mold. And what he says is that people are going to assume you're dirty. Well, mold's not a thing that has to do with dirt. It's in water damaged buildings and it's sight unseen. So it's impacting millions of people across the world. There's many professionals who are talking about it now because air quality is something that's at risk and you can't see it happening. So we know that water damaged buildings that have three factors, there's organic material that can be dust, dirt, leaves, there's moisture and there's heat. Those are the three parameters that basically impact if mold becomes mycotoxins. And it's very involved, not something I wanna get into here. But what I wanna share with you is then those toxins enter your body. They can get into your body through your skin, through breathing them in. And this is the important part. They cross the blood brain barrier. When those toxins cross the blood brain barrier, then they demyelinate the cells in your brain. And what happens is that impairs the structure and the function of your brain. We know that it leads to cell death and it leads to disturbances in the way the electrical energy or the circuitry in the brain is operating. Now, when it comes to kids, what happens is exposure at a young age can impact that development of their brain that should be happening optimally. Now it becomes a neurodevelopmental challenge or disorder that wouldn't have happened minus the exposure to the neurotoxins from toxic mold. The first thing that happens is the demyelination. The second thing that happens is that changes the structure and function of the brain cells and the brain circuitry. Now from there, what happens is another mechanism that's called mast cell activation syndrome. The immune cells in the body are now on red alert because they have been exposed to toxins. So they get on red alert and they stay on red alert. That causes autoimmune disorders and autonomic nervous system dysfunction. They go hand in hand. So from there, what happens is a dysregulated or dysfunctional brain performance pattern as measured on EEG. So we know from a plethora of science that neurodevelopmental disorders, including learning challenges, ADHD, autistic spectrum disorders, they are neurodevelopmental. There are disturbances in the development of brain formation and function. So from there now, children will have learning challenges in terms of psychological and cognitive issues, mental health issues, anxiety, depression, mood challenges, difficulty focusing, inattentiveness, hyperactivity. And again, many times it can be linked back to these toxins in the air quality. Now, I want you to know this is happening and it might be happening to you. So if your child was 
developing typically or optimally, and now your child has significant challenges, air quality and the toxins within it may be at play. So here's what I want you to know is that how I help people is I offer a QEEG brain map. I can see if there's a dysfunctional brain pattern and if so, what that brain pattern is telling us. Is it the brain pattern associated with anxiety, with ADHD, with toxic exposure, with autonomic nervous system dysfunction? I can see that, I share that with you. And then this is the most important part is that Neurofeedback brain training is a non-invasive way to regulate the brain back to the highly functional status that it may have had at one point or that it can have in the future. So if your kiddo is struggling with a neurodevelopmental challenge like ADHD or autistic spectrum challenges, there may be a solution to be able to regulate the brain and especially if it's because of this toxic exposure. Now in this recent study, what I found very interesting is that the authors say that it's imperative to treat the central nervous system first. And what they mean is that the central and peripheral nervous system, when we treat it and we regulate it, from there on out, detoxification is enhanced, cognition is enhanced, the ability of the body and the mind to work better so that the system can come back online towards optimal. Regulating the central nervous system is the front line of being able to help moving forward. So if you want more information on how that might be possible for you, please reach out. Go visit my website, drtrishlee.com. You can visit the pages on neurodevelopmental disorders and challenges. There's a page on QEG brain mapping and neurofeedback coaching. I encourage you to check it out. And if it feels good, I'd love to be part of your journey. All right, until next time, I hope that helps and control your brain or it'll control you.